Shalom. All praises go to the Most High Yahweh, Basham Yahashem, Basham Rukh HaKadash, double honor unto the Elder Apostles, a great millstone for the teachings of the scriptures, among other things. Shalom to the Sassin Akim across the world. Now, I was looking up a. I typed in the God of the Edomites, right? And it came out here as Quas, right? <coughs> and also went down to look at the so called questions where it says people's, people also ask. And I saw this. What does the Heavenly Father say about Edomites, right? Because, well, I'm going to get to this. Because this is very funny here. A lot of lies and just misleading type of information is going around. Now, I'm going to click on this word, Quas, right here. Which is their entity, the, the God that they worship, right, as the Edomites. Edomites. Lay their Quas, da 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 Okay, blah, blah, blah. But they also often say Idumians. Why? They want to water down this word so that it gets lost in the translation. Because this is the original word in the English. And this is then the English word of the Greek meaning of this. Because it says here Idumians. Edom. Edom and Idumia are two related but distinctive distinct terms. <coughs> <coughs> so it says here, that's what they're trying to make you think. But if you go to the Bible, dictionary, and you, and you check out the word Idumia, Edom. It is the same word. Edomite, Idumian, descendant of Esau, land of Edom, Idumia. They just changed the word. They translated it from the Greek into the English. Right? Because they, uh, they're trying to trick you. Right. Idumian, as on the Delphi and Judea. Edom, Hebreos, Edom. Is it Chubit? This in the Dutch, by the way. What happened to the Idumians? <laughs> Edom, Idumia. Idumia. It just goes to Edom, man. Alternative forms. of Idumia, it says here, or uh, of or pertaining to ancient Idumia or Edom. That's it. They just, just they're giving you the runaround. That shows you that they have a snake tongue. They're not straightforward with it because they're running away from it. Now it says here, Quas, right? Uh, was was the national god of the Edomites. He was the Idumian rival of Yahweh, right? Which then, therefore, then goes to Yahweh. And this is, uh, man, you do have the word Yahweh here. Well, yeah. I can't even read the rest that good, but anyway. Right, but the point is here. Now, this is their God. This thing over here, as you can see, the eagle above their head, of its head. And it is a female, one of their female idols, which they call goddess or whatever. And if you check out good the history, you have the Egyptian eagles. Yeah, they had eagles too. But then Esau, the American eagle, and they're, all their kingdoms have this. You had, yes, you had the Egyptians use the eagle also, but they have had other animals and stuff like that, like the scarab, like a bee, a, the beetle. So they had different ones. But the main top symbols of these Edomites is the eagle. You have the American eagle. You have the Russian eagle, which is the coats of arms. So it says the double-headed eagle is the symbol most strongly associated with Russia. 
which this is what this is their eagle this is their coats of arms right as you can see this is this is what they represent you might have thought the bear yeah that's uh, I think that was recent now you have the Greek eagle right it says here the eagle came to be used as an emblem of several rulers from the Achaemenid or something like that man I don't know it's it's this over here <coughs> The, from the Persian Empire, Iran, the Iranians and stuff like that, right? Which is here, its location. They used to kind of use it also, but they also used the lion and then a eagle body and stuff like that, which is um, this thing. This is just one of their symbols. From those people to Alexander the Creep, and fine and uh, and and the this thing over here, the Adoshi, and finally the Roman emperors. So they use that also, right? It says here, Jupiter Lightning became the chief symbol, Aquila, of the Roman legions. And Aquilia is the bird. The Aquilia eagle. Wait, wait. Motherfucking piece of shit. Yeah, the, this, this goes into it. And, um, sorry, I think it was Roman. This. This thing was the Roman, their thing. Symbol. And of course you have then the Roman eagle, I already showed that, which is the Aquila. This is the Roman symbol. And this is the Nazi symbol, which they still follow on to this day. That's why you have all these, especially Marvel characters, fighting against Nazism. They keep on bringing it back into remembrance. But things like this they don't talk about, nor... You should ask yourself also, if Esau is the brother of Jacob, right, the bloodline of Abraham to Esau, according to the Hebrew Bible, Esau is the progenitor of the Edomites and the elder brother of Jacob, the patriarch of the Israelites, which is Jacob, right? Jacob and Esau were the sons of Isaac and Rebekah and the grandsons of Abraham and Sarah. Of the twins, Esau was the first to be born and Jacob following, holding his heel. So it seems that this is a very important character in the Bible because it's with the most important character of the Bible, well, the, the more important character of the Bible, which is Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yet his twin brother Esau is never mentioned commercially. The only way that we know it is because of the Aldo Apostles on down teaching about them, or else we would not know. Who's Esau? We've not really heard of him. <clears throat> right. So, now it says here. Let me just straight get to the point because there's a lot of confusing nonsense up in here. I looked it up and I, and I almost kind of got a headache. Because of the foolishness that's in here. Right? I do mean names and including the names of Edomite kings. Why are you using two different words? To confuse you, that's why. Many Idumean names and Edomite kings in the same sentence. Two different words in the same sentence. <laughs> okay. Now it says here. I like the chief idol of the Ammonites, which is uh, Molech. Another Molech. Well, Mo you, have, you have different... How do you call it again? These Hamites used to worship that too. And Moab, uh, the Shechem nonsense, refers from explicitly naming Edomite questing. Yeah, I don't even want to name their, their gods, but I, this is for edification's sake. So yeah, it just it sounds filthy coming off, the, coming off the tongue, rolling off the tongue like that. The omission may be explained according, explained according to some scholars by assuming 
there were close similarities between <laughs> right that would have made rejection of the latter difficult hmm. okay multiple poet poetic refrains in the hebrew bible claim that then uh, <laughs> yahweh embarked in some form it's just filthy saying it but going on from seer so it says here he embarked in some form from seer in the region of edom he embarked from there embarked go abroad da, 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 began right a course of action so he began from he became he began from edom going on recently the view has been adva uh, advanced that was originally a Kenite god <laughs> whose cult spread north of Midian to the to the Israelites. So it came later on to them through Edom because I have this is uh, this this is their god whatever. But they have another god which is here Edom. When I typed in Edom in Wikipedia, then they give you all this. Trust me, man, it's a lot of garbage up in it. So it says, okay, religion, right? The nature of Edomite religion is largely unknown before their conversion to Judaism. <laughs> Did you get that? Let me read it again. Let me take away the color. The nature of Edomite religion is largely unknown before their conversion to Judaism by the Hasmoneans. Do you do you understand what they just told you? They told you that the Edomites, their religion, is largely unknown before their conversion to Judaism. So it shows you that the Edomites are these people. They they show you right there in that text. But the funny part is. Once you start reading on, <laughs> they're going to confuse the stuffings out of you. Epigraphical evidence suggests that the national god of Edom was this Quas thing, also known as blah, blah, blah. Since Quas <coughs> sorry, is invoked in the blessing formula. What? Is invoked in the blessing formula in letters and appears in personal names found in ancient Edom. As close relatives of other uh, Levitine Semites. Levitine Semites. I've never heard of that. So I looked it up. And it says Canaan. So it says here. As close relatives of other, basically Canaan. So other uh, um, Semites. Canaan is not a Semite. Oh, sorry. Here. No? Here. So these, these, these people is a um, was Semitic speaking civilization so Canaan was a Semitic speaking civilization and region in the ancient Near East during the late second millennium BC what let's go back over here in the book of Genesis chapter 10 Genesis chapter 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan. He's not, he is not a relative of Esau because Esau came, around here Esau didn't even exist, by the way. He existed only in Genesis 25, and this is Genesis 5, uh, 10, sorry, verse 6. And then it says here, these places were made... And then it goes to verse 21. And unto Shem, these are the people that speak, that or the, that would be called Shemetic. Or Semitic. Or, but uh, Shemetic. Semitic is the same thing. Right. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, which goes into Hebrew. The brother of Japhet the elder, which is Shem. Shem is the elder because he came first. 
and then Shem is the first, Ham is the second, and Japheth is the third. Right? Even to him were children born. Yeah, unto Shem. And you had um, Al Faxad, and you had Peleg, and then if you read in Genesis 11, then it goes from uh, Al Faxad, wait, sorry. to Salah, to Eber, which is Hebrew, Ibar, actually, Ibar, which is Hebrew, Peleg, Ru, Seger, Noar, Tera, or Tara, Tara, which is the father of, so it says here, Nahor is the father of Tara, right, let me read it, and Nahor lived nine and twenty years, and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So Abram named his son <coughs> after his grandfather. And also Nahor was also a city, a place. So it might seem a lot of... So you have a lot of so-called confusing things actually but if you check it out it's very hard to understand sometimes but uh, you had places that were that were had you had men that had names of places and you had places that was named after men back in the ancient day and you had men that had uh, grandsons named after them and therefore when you read the genealogy you'd be like hey wait a minute i saw this guy right here how can he be his own son that's not him. That's his grandson. Right. So it goes on to here. Abraham. Right. And then from Abraham. Guess who came out of that? Isaac. And then Isaac and Rebecca got Jacob and Esau. So when they're telling you that. They are close relatives to the Lev... 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 Levine, what? Levantine Semonites. They're bullshitting you. Right. Anyway. They may have worshipped such God as El, which is Allah. Baal, which is the golden calf. Nowadays known as the golden calf, which is the heifer. Tobit 1 and 5. Uh, it says here, Now all the tribes which, you get, which together revolted in the house of my father Naphtali sacrificed unto the heifer Baal. A heifer is a cow. And it is the... Are they playing? Oh, they removed it! Oh! <laughs> okay. Everybody that saw the videos that I made before this, you saw that um, Google had it. Uh, the heifer Baal, they showed you this. Let me go to Yahoo, of course. Because, hey, amen. Using, using Google now is, um, you would not want to do research or something like that. I don't use Google. Because, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're bullshitting. It's quick and, and some stuff like that. But anyway, this is the heifer Baal. It's the same thing that they worship in Wall Street. And in Wall Street, they also have a girl in front of the cow on Wall Street, by the way. Yeah, which represent child sacrifice. Why would you do that? Because they was given... They was given their children to Molech back in the days. Here, as you can see. So it's all symbolic, done, backhanded. But that Edomite that I that I just showed, his uh, website, he, he puts two and two together. As will other people, but yeah, going on. So it says here, the oldest biblical tradition, yeah, all these nonsense uh, idols. The oldest biblical tradition place Yahweh. As the deity of Sodom Edom 
and may have originated in Edom, Seir, Teman, Sinai before being adopted in Israel and Judah. <laughs> did, did you get that? So, so it says that, basically it says that the Edomites had the Heavenly Father first before it was adopted by Israel and Judah. There is a Jewish tradition, so it's a lot of snake tongue shit going on around here. There's a, there's a Jewish tradition stemming from the Talmud, their book, that the descendants of Esau would eventually become the Romans. <laughs> and to a larger extent, all Europeans. <laughs> you see how they're playing around? So they speak in truth and lies at the same time. But I'm going to get to this because it says before being adopted in Israel and Judah. I'll get to that through the scriptures. Because they don't reference you no scriptures. No scriptures. No. I mean, going on. Uh, so it says here, Josephus states that uh, Costabatus appointed by Herod to be governor of Idumia and Gaza. Why don't you just say Edom? <laughs> Trickery again. Was descended from the priest of the Koze, who, Koze, whatever, whom the Idumians had formerly served as a god. So the Edomites. Here comes it again, Edomite. This guy here, Victor, describes an archaeology. Uh, whoa. Text. <laughs> archaeology. Right, but I know it doesn't say that. So archaeology, whatever. The text may well be Edomite. I got to really sit down and pronounce this word. Reflecting on the language, literal, and literature, and religion of Edom. And this was one of their so called the, the, the Edomite goddess figure in the Israel Museum. <laughs> With horns on it and stuff like that. They're female god. This is god is a quit them, whatever. They they keep on changing the names. You have to understand that in order to confuse you even more. And the Hasdonian dynasties, uh, because I all also checked out this, the Hasdonians, because I was Thinking like, okay, uh, Hasdonians gave you that thing. Okay, cool. So it says here, the Hasdonian dynasty had survived for 103 years before yielding to the Hero Herodian dynasty, which we know that he was around in the time of Yahweh Shai because he's trying to kill Yahweh Shai. They're calling him Her Herod the Great, the great devil. The installation of Herod the Great, an Edomite, because it says Idumian, but when you click on that word Idumian, it says Edom. <laughs> why are they doing it? They're confusing you. That's why. They create confusion. The Heavenly Father said, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So when you see you have a lot of Israelites coming together and then fighting against each other, you know that the Lord is not there. <laughs> He's not there. So going back to over here, it says that as king in 37 BC, I'm not going to read the other one, uh, this is the other letter, made Judea a Roman client state and marked the end of the Hasdonian dynasty. But the point is that they show you that he's an Edomite. And yet they use the word Idumian. Hmm. Go figure. And I'm going through the scriptures. Now, like I said, I checked it out, the God of the Edomites. And then I scroll down, of course, and then what does the Heavenly Father say about Edomites? It's important to note that the Heavenly Father, when speaking to the Israelites, revered to Edom as your brothers, the sons of Esau. Now, okay, uh, Deuteronomy 2 and 4. The same meaning can be found in the expression, you shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. Deuteronomy 23, 8 and actually uh, seven okay so they so they associate that with that so now we'll go here now it says here Deuteronomy 2 and of course 4 and commanded thou people saying ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren the children of Israel uh, sorry <laughs> Esau which dwell in Seir and they shall be afraid of you 
take good take good heed unto yourselves therefore mellow not with them for i will not give you of their land no not so much as a foot breath because i have given mount seir unto esau for possession okay cool can you can read the rest for yourself if you desire deuteronomy 25 verse 17 remember amalek remember what amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of egypt how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee he murdered us even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary and he feared not Jehovah. so because he did this therefore it shall come to pass when Yahweh thy power had given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, so when we are at ease, in the land which the which Yahweh thy power giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. That's why the Lord got angry at ex King Saul when he didn't do that. Now, way before that, it was already prophesied by Balaam, if I'm correct. You know the story of Balaam, Balaam and Balak? Balaam and Balak. You can read the whole chapter for yourself if you can, if you find the time. Now it says here, Deuteronomy 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he shall perish forever. So Amalek is from Esau. So clearly these Edomites, they're going to perish forever. Right, the Amalekites, let's say that, of the Edomites. Now, when it says, like, uh, thou shalt not uh, abhor an Edomite, it actually means thou shalt not abhor a Syrian. Because Laban was a Syrian, and therefore, his sister Rebekah was a Syrian. And Rebekah was married unto Isaac. And Leah and Rachel were also Syrian. So we, got the, we got their wives from there. So that's why we was not supposed to abhor them like that. But even if it does say Edom, let's say it's a Edom, right? Because they're always trying to confuse you with Idumians and Edomites. Oh, they're that type of nonsense. Let's say it was Edomites, right? Then the Lord said, Wait, wait, wait. Well, not this one. Uh, right. And the Lord said, Did, did, didn't I put it? Wait, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I put it. Uh -huh. I think I put it somewhere, but I can't find it right now. Yeah, I, I did, I did, I remember it now. Just came in my head. Hmm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, whatever. Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I love Esau. Oh boy. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, we. But we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I, the Heavenly Father himself, will throw them down, basically. We'll throw down, throw them down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. All the people round about shall call these Edomites the border of wickedness. Everywhere they go, they go and are, there is the border of wickedness. And, so this is what the people shall also say, and the people against whom the Lord had indignation forever. So, that's one case. So that, there goes this nonsense concerning that the Heavenly Father was with the Edomites before he was with the Israelites because he hates them. 
is mentioned two times in the scriptures, by the way. How he hates, well, more often, but explicitly, he said, I hate them. I hated Esau and all the Edomites. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Heavenly Father because he loves one and he hates another? The Heavenly Father forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So he does what he wants. Now it says here, because they were saying that <coughs> sorry now it says here um, with the Yahweh and quest and stuff like that let me read this Yahweh was originally a Kenite God whose cult spread north of Midian to the Israelites According to this approach, Quas might possibly have been a title for this Yahweh. I don't want to say it, but anyway, let me just be trying to be normal. Uh, let me bear with it. Uh, rather than a name, right? A further point connecting Yahweh with Quas, Quas, aside from their common origin in that territory, is that the Edomite cult of the latter shared characteristics of the former. Mm-hmm. Thus we find that Doag the Edomite had no problem in worshiping Yahweh. Yeah, and he, uh, he is shown to be at the house of the Jewish sanctuaries. We know that the Joag, uh, sorry, Doag, he actually murdered the priests, which was mentioned here, Doag the Edomite. 1 Samuel 21 and 7. Now a certain, of the, a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before Yahweh, and his name was Doag, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. And he was the one that murdered all the, let me see, 40, which is, four score is, uh, three, four, six, 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 85 persons. This is 80. And he murdered 80, 85 priests in one day, as you can read it here. So that, that shows you how holy he was. <laughs> right? Like, you love the Lord, right? He just followed after Saul, because Saul told him, go do it. Because he was a wicked piece of feces also. So it says here, um, let me read it again. Additionally, supplication of Yahweh is not uncommon where mentions of 